Hello all, welcome to rotrainings.com. In this session, we'll discuss about two types of templates. One is XSL style sheet, and other one is XSL FO template with respect to BI publisher in Fusion applications. So the first one is XSL style sheet, which is very easy to design, and it supports only limited set of output formats. Generally, you can see here, it supports HTML, XML, and text as well as CSV. So we need to understand why should we use XSL style sheet and which scenarios. So in general, the purpose of this particular template is to generate mostly in XML format output with the pre like uh, you know like uh, with the customer specific requirement. Nothing but generally, you know, when you design a SQL query, the data gets generated in the row set and row fashion. Like uh, you'll have a row set and you'll have a record, and for each column you'll have a XML tag. But let us say if you want to include, let us say I have around 10 columns in my record and I want three columns in one particular parent and seven columns in another parent and you want to have a different grouping for these set of columns, then you prefer this XSL style sheet wherein you can mention the customize your tag name. So and you can have a, a different XML generated rather than a normal standard generation. That is the purpose of this particular style sheet. Now coming to the other format, which is called XSL FO, it's a little bit complex compared to the previous one, but it has, but it supports larger number of output formats. The general formats we know, like uh, when you design, if, we, if at all, if you are design RTF template, it supports RTF, PDF, Excel sheet, document, text, right? And similarly, this XSL FO supports all these format. Apart from this, it supports a special format called FO formatted XML. Okay, so. You know, like why it is used, I'm not sure, but generally like uh, this particular special template is used for that purpose. And when you are uploading the XSL template, XSL style sheet template or FO template, you have to make sure that you select the appropriate template type. So the one, the first one is here, the type is XSL style sheet. This is for the purpose of XSL style sheet template. Other one is XSL style sheet FO template. So both are different, both are not same at all, okay? And now we'll see these particular two formats, okay? And we'll see the sample of the first one, which is a generally easier one. So let me open that. So here, if you observe the XSL LT temple template, which is style sheet one. So here, what I'm doing is, yeah, before that, let me show my data model. So then we can understand very easily. Yeah, this is the one. So in this one, you can observe here, the top level parent tag in my report is data DS. And then we have G1, which is nothing but a record. And in the G1 record, I have my party data. So this is based on a single query. So this is the one. This is G1 data. And here I just have a customer query, which is getting the accounts parties data. Now in this G1 is my record. So now here in the template, what is the logic we have written? So the logic is here, we are just trying to read the data and also you can observe the top level parent tag. The top level parent tag here I mentioned as XSL element. Nothing but I want to, I want to generate a parent tag called customer. In that one, I want to read the data from data DSGN G1, which is my group, my record set. In that I want to generate one more parent tag called customer ID. So within customer ID, I want to generate party ID and party number. And in another parent tag called customer name, I want to generate party type as well as party name. So nothing but the top level parent is customer. And then I have second level parent, which is customer ID. In the customer ID, I have two tags. Similarly, at the same level of customer ID, I have one more tag called customer name. In the customer name, I have party type as well as party name. And if you try to see the output of this one, right? So you can observe here, I'll show this output. So this one, the top level tag is customer and I have my customer ID data which is having two columns. Similarly, I have customer name, which is having other two columns, right? Party ID, party number, party type, party name. So for division of your XML data into different level of content, you can use this one. Ideally, the data which was generated from a standard data model was this, like uh, this one, right? This was our data model in which there was no hierarchy, a very simple uh, group, like uh, the top level group is data set, data DS, and then you have a record, and the record you have a columns. But in this one, the customized data generated one, which is based on this particular XSL style sheet template, what was happening is we are generating a, a different set of parent tags in that we are different, like uh, generating the, the next level of tags, right? So how do we upload? Very simple. So now let us say I'll go to my report and 
So here I already have this customer data xslt.xl, right? So I'll just click on this one and I'll delete. And one more thing. So you can't edit any of these XSL templates. I mean to say, let us say if you want to assume that you have modified your template. And if you're at all, if you want to upload the modified template, right? Let us say I'll click on properties. And if I try to upload this option, it does not show the type as XSL. It shows only RTF. So what it does it mean is for only RTF template, you can upload the updated template. For other any other formats, there is no option to upload the updated template. The only option is simply click on delete or you can disable it or upload a new file with a different name. I'll click on add new layout and upload. And here I'll mention the template name as XSL. And here I'll choose the file. The file name is xslt.xl. And here I'll select style sheet and then English and upload. Okay, so this is all about XSL style sheet template. Now we'll discuss about the XSL FO template. XSL FO template is a little bit complicated. So, but still, yeah, we'll discuss XSL FO.XSL. And here, so in this one, you can consider that it does not need to remember all these things. You need to use any of the predefined templates. And only logic you need to understand is when you are generating the output, what kind of output you're expecting. If at all, if you want to generate an Excel sheet template, and what is the first record you want, what is the second record you want, and what are the columns you want, you need to mention, mention the information about that in an explicit manner. So now here, if you observe, I'll show the output once. And then we can discuss in this output. I what I want to do is in the first record, in the first record, I want to generate the report name as customer details report. And after that, I want to have empty row. Then after that, I want to have a around six columns. I want to have it. So then what did I mention is I have defined this one. Like I have on six columns with of equal size, the first thing. And then I mentioned the table row. This is my first table row, the table row where I mentioned my customer details report. And similarly, I want to define an empty row with the empty row. I just mentioned only two columns. It doesn't matter actually, but it, this is an empty row here, table row, and I just define only two columns. And then the third row, right? So in the third row, what do we have? The third row we have columns. Okay. So then the third row we have columns. So here we mentioned column names around one, two, three, four, five, six columns we have mentioned. And after the third row, in the fourth row, what did we mention? We mentioned the actual data which we are retrieving from our G1. So you can observe here line number 140 or one, yeah, 140, we clearly mentioned we want to read the data from the G1 group, right? So select G1 and then here we mentioned table cell and mention the data XSL value of party ID. So we mentioned the party ID here and similarly, remaining columns like for each table cell, it's like tell, cell is nothing but your Excel sheet cell, you can consider it as, and we mentioned the value of party name. Similarly, account number, party type, account creation date and all those things. Okay, so this is how we can design the template. Once you design the template, what is the next option? Go to the instance. Let us say I click on view as a list. As I said, you you don't have an option to upload the template. Only thing is you if at all, if it is an existing template, you simply click on delete it or disable it and upload a new template. So I'll just upload a new template now. Click on view thumbnails add new layout upload. And here I'll choose the file. The file is this one, xslfo.xl, and I'll say xslfo, and make sure that you select xsl style sheet fo, locale is English, upload. And the other very important observation is click on view as a list. Before that, I'll click on save, click on view as a list, and you can see the output formats which are supported by the these templates. So it supports large number of output formats, HTML, PDF, RTF, document, HTML, HTML, Excel, Excel sheet, PowerPoint, and PDF, zip code format, as well as XML, FO format XML, as well as CSV. Similarly, if you observe the style sheet one, it supports only very limited formats, only HTML, XML text, XML, CSV. And if you observe the, the general used one, RTF, yeah, it supports larger number of formats, right? And it also supports FO format XML, okay? But it, it should be a little bit different. So it all depends upon the the consumer of this report, let us say if this report output is used by some other third party instance, if at all, if they want a very different format, yes, definitely have to go with the XSLFO. Now let us say I click on view report. Yeah, I'll just go with XSLFO. Right, this is how it looks like. And you can just generate the output to Excel sheet. 
yeah you can test it okay and yeah before designing this template let us say if at all if you want to like uh, when you are modifying the template right it is very cumbersome to always upload the updated template and validate it and if it doesn't work delete it and re-upload it. it's very tough tough time right so if at all if you have a template viewer which is working fine the best thing is you just validate it from your local system so now for validating it from local system what you have to do is yeah open the template viewer which will be generally installed in your program files folder and now select the data data as well as xsl file should be in the same folder now left side i'll select the data and then right side i'll select my template and the output i'll select the appropriate one let us say if you at all if you want to have html you can select it and if you want to select this one xlsx select it and click on start processing so once you click on start processing it should be able to generate the data if everything is okay if there is any mistake definitely it will not generate it and this option yeah so this option is not available for the xsl style sheet template you can observe here it supports only xsl fo template but not the other one xsl style sheet template doesn't work i you can just try this here let us click here and you know i'll maybe i'll select even the yeah, when the working one also will not work. Let me try. I'll select PDF. Right, FO formatting fail. Right, so it supports only FO formatting. So that's why only for FO it works. The template viewer works in the local system. This BI temp BI published template viewer, which will be available in your program files, and this works only for the XSL FO template, not the XSL style sheet template. Okay, so this is all about you know like um, the different the two templates which we want to discuss. Okay, thank you.